Hello, this is Stan for GPT for Work. Let me show you how to use our new agent. So I will go through the examples that you can replicate here. Let me zoom in a little bit. In this case, we are going to calculate the revenue for each row and the agent will basically understand your spreadsheets, understand your prompt here, and then uh, devise a plan. In this case, it was to add a formula and to fill it through the column. So you can see that it added the formula um, in each cell and we're done. Okay, so now let's go through another example. Say that you have a formula that is broken. In this case, I have an X lookup that is wrong. I don't know why, so I just want it fixed. And so I type this in my prompt box here and I click send. And again, the agent will automatically understand the spreadsheets, the formulas, and fix the formula for you in this case. As you can see, it has, and it will also explain everything it's doing. So as you can see, it has here uh, fixed the formula. It has used uh, uh, and now the job is indeed software engineer. And I could even test it. Let's say I change this to Jack. Then we can verify that Jack is indeed an accountant. Okay, another example. Let's do some bulk web research. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. Here I have a list of companies and I want to fill out this uh, table of market research. Um, so once this, this used to be very painful to do, uh, but now you can just type out these four words and click send and the agent will automatically understand what you want to do uh, based only on the uh, content of the spreadsheets and the headers. So you can see here that it understood uh, what every column uh, should be filled with and then it will use the bulk tools of GPT for Excel by configuring them automatically. Uh, it will choose a model, in this case it chose Sonar by Perplexity to fetch from the web. It wrote a prompt template automatically and then applied it row by row to column B. And it does that for every column step by step automatically without me having to do anything. Uh, so this is really, really cool and a huge uh, simplification in how you can use GPT for Excel compared to what we had before. Okay, let's wait uh, for it to finish. So it's doing column G, headcount, and a final uh, software uh, or no software classification for these companies. Now, as you may notice, um, sometimes uh, the data that you want is not in a perfect, uh, perfectly usable spreadsheet format. Uh, and something that you might want to do is to uh, bucket uh, the revenue and headcount columns into standard ranges. So again, I just type in a vague prompt and it will understand what I want to do. Um, write the prompt by itself and give me, in this case, really clean columns that are then easily easy to filter or easy to sort, easy to group, uh, much nicer than what we had here. And I did that with a really simple follow-up. Um, I could also have put everything, all my instructions in the first prompt, but I wanted to show you the follow-up in this case. Now let's try yet another example. So let's do uh, country research. Just to show you in this case, two things. Um, the first thing is you can uh, put some, uh, let me zoom a bit here. You can put some instructions and let's just wrap these so that 
they're easier to read. You can, sometimes a header name is not sufficient uh, to give details about what you want. So you can put some additional instructions in a row um, in order for the agent to clarify its prompt and give you the best results uh, possible. So this is really powerful. And the second thing I wanted to show you is that it, the table doesn't have to start in A1. Here you can see it starts in B3. So uh, the agent um, works even if your spreadsheet is not perfectly aligned uh, and is, 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 it is built um, to respect the freedom of the spreadsheet. So again, I think this is really cool, uh, really cool feature. As you can see, it works very well. I'll move on to the uh, next example, just to show you that you can actually stop it, and then you could even click Resume. But let's go to a new example. You may want to um, clean up data. So in this case, I've got a lot of columns with some data that is um, not easy to use and contains some typos. You can see in the emails. Uh, so let's, I can just say clean up all my columns. And what the agent will do is, uh, again, understand what you want and then create new columns here. Uh, it's important to highlight that the agent does not overwrite your contents so that in case it makes a mistake, you do not lose your content. So it prefers to create new columns uh, and, um, and then write the new content so that also you can compare what, was, what you had with what it did, okay? So you can see now all the dates are in the same format, all the companies have been cleaned, company names have been cleaned, the people name as well, the, clean, the amounts as well, we removed, the agent removed the uh, currency symbols, um, etc. Okay, let's uh, stop it again, move on to a new case. Um, content generation. Uh, so in this case, it's an SEO uh, example. And again, I give some instructions at the top, especially as for the number of characters. So I'll just click send here. And the agent will take into consideration each of those. There we go, I get my meta titles for each product and a meta description. And you can see here, I'll show you um, that the agent really took into account the instruction to keep it under 150 characters um, in its prompt template. Now you could do something like check the length of the titles and the descriptions. And what's super nice here is it did it with formula, so um, you can see whether uh, it respected the instructions or not. As you, as you know, sometimes AI is not super good at uh, respecting instructions exactly uh, for a uh, number of characters. So in the case of a meta title, it's fine. You may want to rewrite it, but you don't have a strict guideline. Uh, the further the character count, the better it is at respecting the actual number. You can see here there is no value that's uh, above 150. But if you were to write uh, ads, like in this example, uh, then it can become more in, uh, much more um, important to respect the uh, maximum of 30 characters. So in this case, I typed a prompt that says, okay, for each keyword, generate a search ad headline with these constraints and then check them. And if some are uh, too long, then rewrite them. So this is to show you, you can actually um, give multiple instructions to the agent and they will be executed step-by-step step in a separate columns so that it will be very easy to follow and check. Okay, there we go. So it's important to um, 
highlight that currently the agent cannot do formatting of any sort. So as you can see here, we have one, um, one headline that's too large. So let's see if the agent detects it. So it did uh, create a condition here to apply the, the rewriting prompt. Uh, and it did rewrite only the one where uh, the headline was too large. And so now we have a new size of 22 characters. So we're great. Uh, amazing. So just imagine like how this would have been uh, painful to do uh, manually. And of course, it would work on thousands of lines. I can show you uh, yet another example, which would be to, okay, let me just wrap this text here, to translate all of that. So, um, I want to translate all these product descriptions in various languages, and it will do it. So the cool thing is you can really, um, as exemplified in this prompt talk, uh, prompted in natural language, you can visually describe the spreadsheets. You can say uh, column B, row one, you can even um, say it, even if your wording is not perfect, the agent will uh, most of the time understand what you want. Okay, so now it's translating. And I'll just wait for the second column to start filling and I'll stop the agent then because I think uh, the point is clear. Just to end uh, the video, I'll say that, um, okay, there we go. Let me stop it now. Uh, it's important to highlight what the agent cannot do at the moment. Uh, so it cannot yet scrape specific URLs, although this is coming soon. It cannot take images or documents as inputs. Uh, it cannot create charts, pivot tables, or dashboards. It cannot manipulate your spreadsheets uh, in the sense of adding or removing columns, rows, or even tabs. And it cannot style your spreadsheet. So it cannot change uh, the, the color, the text format, the size of columns or rows. Uh, but all of these features will be coming in the next few months. So it is really... Uh, um, what it can really do is create formulas, uh, do bulk transformation, um, and generate many cells, uh, generate lists, and also summarize. Uh, so you could ask, for example, if I go back here uh, to this sheet, I could ask it, okay, uh, summarize this data for me and point out interesting uh, insights something like this you could do. So let's see what it comes up with. There we go. So it created a nice little summary, key insights on revenue and headcount, software versus not software. Um, interesting patterns. Of course, my question was quite vague. So uh, if you wanted a, a deeper analysis, then you could you could ask a more precise question. Uh, it can even suggest those kind of questions for you. Thank you for listening. Uh, we're uh, very excited about releasing this agent. Uh, do reach out via this little feedback button here to us in order to um, provide us with your feedback, whether feature requests or um, uh, report bugs or other kinds of problems. We think this makes it much, much easier to use um, GPT for Excel than before and to apply bulk AI to apply bulk AI on in your spreadsheets. Um, until next time, signing off.